Globally, there is a recognised problem that carbon dioxide gas being pumped out into the atmosphere causes global warming. Now, whether we look at this particular impact as a result of carbon dioxide emissions from cars, vans, buses, etc., or whether it is linked with global warming through solar cycles, what we're trying to look at here at the University of Brighton a means of making the combustion engine more efficient, but also looking at various processes in which we can take in carbon dioxide and try and convert it into a more useful material, thus seriously reducing the impact of releasing CO2 into the upper atmosphere. I'm Ray Whitby from the University of Brighton. Let's go and find out how we're making it a reality. Welcome to the Michael Chan Laboratory. Here we've constructed a specialist rig where we're looking at the dissociation of carbon dioxide. The reactor uh, we call Rococo. It stands for the reduction of critically opalescent carbon dioxide. What we're trying to do, we take in carbon dioxide, we convert it into its critically opalescent state. I know this is rather technical, but what we're looking at is getting it to a specific pressure and temperature within a reactor. We can then hit it with ultraviolet radiation. Now within this reactor, we're looking at using a UV source for a very powerful laser, which is sent through the system, redirected into the black box. Within the black box, we have the metal reactor, which contains the carbon dioxide. So the majority of the laser energy hits the box and then dissociates carbon dioxide into its component forms. After the reaction, we then take out the reactor, we simply examine it using conventional electron microscopy, and then we can see what shapes and sizes and fundamental properties we have of these carbons that were formed. After we've created our materials within the Rococo reactor, where we've dissociated carbon dioxide into its component forms, we've made it a stable material. This material can then be put into the SEM. The SEM is a scanning electron microscope. It uses highly accelerated electrons, which impact off the sample and collected by a very sophisticated detector. And this gives us very high magnifications of the sample. We can resolve the images down to nanometer levels. From here, we can also use various instruments that are associated with SEM in order to characterize its chemical performance. The SEM can resolve high magnification images of our samples. And within here, we can actually see the geometrical arrangement of our system. What we can then do is look at the degree to which this geometry varies and try to relate that back to the properties of the system that we've used. So whether it is a case of trying to alter the wavelength of the laser, the number of times it hits the system, or whether it's uh, how powerful this particular shot of laser is. What we then try and do is look at the total array of conditions and how that impacts the final geometry. From this particular point, we can then go on and look at some of its more fundamental properties and where it can be applied. What we then have to do is subject it to chemical treatment processes. What we're trying to do is to tailor their final properties for a specific application. If we can then use this process, generate a large scale material, we'll have a rope that we can tether to the Earth and stretch it up into outer space. Now NASA is interested in this particular piece of research as it can replace conventional rocket technology with the NASA Space Elevator. Nano Velcro, which can be applied to materials to improve their strength and adhesion. Ultracapacitors, which have a high energy storage capability and can be used in cars, mobile phones and solar cells. Or even advanced catalysts for organic chemical remediation in sewage treatment plants, which can be used to clean up organic waste chemicals in water. So we'll nip upstairs and we'll have a look at some of the instruments we have to test the properties of these systems and how well they perform within the application we have desired. After the chemical processing of the samples, we want to evaluate their performance on the bulk scale. We have several instruments distributed throughout the university that we can use in collaboration with other departments and other groups. In particular interest that I have is the mechanical strength of the system. So we'll take carbon nanotubes where we've chemically modified them to interface with the polymer, and hopefully we'll see these mechanical strengths reinforced from the nanoscale up through the macro scale using this particular instrument, the Instron Dual Column Analyzer. So I've shown you some of the processes that are involved in converting carbon dioxide into stable carbon forms and how we might exploit their fundamental properties in new generations and applications, whether it's for laptops or reducing the size of mobile phone batteries, or whether we can use these materials for cleaning up wastewater streams. 
Now we have to overcome the vast energy requirements of converting carbon dioxide into these nanoscale materials. By bringing together a multitude of researchers from across the university, we hope to make a global impact in the reduction of anthropogenic carbon dioxide, reducing the amount of CO2 emitted into the atmosphere from man-made sources. We hope to look at a sustainable piece of technology that will support us for developments of new applications now and for the future.